All right, so I have another one of these stave churches to show you. This one, I believe, is uh, 1168 was built. And uh, it is, uh, the tapestry, the, the, the murals inside is just unmatched, in my opinion. Wait till you see the, uh, the artistry in here. So this is the Uvalde Stave Church in Buskerud, Norway. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Now it's believed that this was constructed in 1168. I'm not sure if there's actually documentation about that, but the church was dated using a process called dendrochronology, which is basically a method of dating tree rings or growth rings uh, in, in trees and, and wood. An archaeological excavation took place here in 1978, which revealed that this church was actually built on top of an old uh, foundation or old remains of a previous church. Nowadays, this church is only used for weddings. Uh, there's no church services or anything like that. I, I, I don't think it's been used as a church since the late 1800s. Now the paintings are really the star of the show here. Uh, you can see Adam and Eve up there above the altar. And then below that is the Last Supper. It's believed that these paintings were done by either local artists or traveling artists. Uh, even some of these artists would travel around and in fact their paintings are believed to be in multiple stave churches. And speaking of the paintings, you can see the benches are the pews. And these are families, family names of, you know, they're wealthy, wealthy families and basically claiming their bench. And uh, I wonder how well that worked out on Christmas or Easter. As anyone who knows, anyone who's been to church knows the absolute crowding that happens on those days. <laughs> this little room is a sacristy. It's basically storage and preparation, furniture, things like that for the uh, sermon. All these churches have to have a, a, a sort of fire suppression or some, some sort of a system since the 90s. It's got to be a painstaking uh, process to kind of plan out how you're going to do this with as little amount as possible to damage anything or cut through anything. But it had to be done, obviously, for, you know, the greater good. And this, believe it or not, this is actually for baptisms. This pole, this is kind of strange, or not strange, but unusual to have a pole like this in the middle of, of these churches. Uh, there might be other state churches that have this, but I have not seen them. Um based on the ones that I've gone to. I have not seen it. Now there's an upstairs area, but it's basically off limits. Uh, I'd love to go up there, but it's, you know, given the age of this church, it ain't happening. And this is interesting. You can see these um, masks on either pole here. It's not really known exactly what they represent or why they are there. Um... But some people believe that it's um, that they capture demons. They're like demon capturers. Kind of interesting. And they do show up in other stave churches. So yes, you know, I've been showing you a few of these churches now, but they're all very different from one another. This one, the interior is unbelievable. Uh, you know, still interesting looking outside, but not as amazing as some of the others. But the interior is by far the best. The lady said that these, whoever is buried here, uh, would have been pretty wealthy or, you know, of local importance. Just because, relatively speaking, there's very few who are buried here. 
And if you can speak Norwegian, then you would know what this is saying. And one of the other ones that I visited, the lady was saying that each each area that has these stave churches, that there's this kind of friendly competition to become, you know, to be the nicest or the oldest or this or that. So they take great pride in these churches. All right, so these two buildings, I believe, are some of the original buildings that were on the property uh, since the 1700s. That means that this church has been here for over 800 years, but the uh, they obviously only built, you know, maybe some other structures that were here with the church, if there were any, are long gone. However, these have been here since, you know, 300 years. I love these buildings, man. Mm Actually, go in this one. But it's not too dark. Oh, good, there's some lights. Timber used for the upper floor was felled in 1626, while the timber in the ground floor was felled in 1746. This structure here is a typical example of a Stabar pillared storehouse. It has a second floor with a gallery on three sides, in addition to a further enclosed gallery on the first floor. <laughs> That's awesome. In the second floor, you can see the old beds. You can also see a travel bed. It's said to belong to a priest. Above the window, there is a coffin. It was found under the floor in the Stave Church during the excavation in 1978. It is now empty. Oh, it is now empty, which means there was something in it? Wow. I could do without the strobe light. But at least it gives you a little bit of an idea of what it looked like in here. Where's the coffin? I don't see it. Oh, it's up there. Why do they have it up there? It's in between the rafters. But it's impossible to see. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't really see it. It's below. It's sitting on the rafters against the wall, basically. This is the house of a retired farmer from approximately 1790 with original interior that dates from 1793. That is awesome. 1793 you're looking at. Eat your heart out, HGTV. Very cool, even the door is amazing. I just love the construction of these buildings and how they did them, like just the weight distribution and the, the way they supported them.
Once again, glad I brought the uh, hiking shoes. Whoa! That was deep. Look at that. Like a shoe repair. Bring your bring your Nikes in there. So within these farms, these communities here, all these buildings were pretty spaced apart, especially the blacksmith shop. Uh, so in case there was a fire, it wouldn't burn the whole village down. So there's a decent amount of space. They were strategically placed apart from each other. Now some of these you can go in. This is the stables, the barn looks like. Oh, there's lights in here. Good. Well, that side at least. Those look like the wagons in the picture. Some of the tools. Man, they really like their axes. <laughs> so this is the water mill which was powered by the stream just behind it. It dates from the 19th century. And uh, big farms would often have their own mill on the farm while smaller farms often shared a communal mill powered by the water. Here, I'll show you the where it would have made contact with the water right there. So it would have spun that and then you pour the wheat or whatever in there, you pour the product in there and then yeah, the water powers it. Somebody carved something in there. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to live in this one. It's right by the water and obviously has a cool fireplace. Oh yeah, look, it has that, the bellows, huge bellows, would feed the uh, fire. So this was obviously the blacksmith shop. That's a fire extinguisher, if you can't tell. And uh, they're very, very careful nowadays about fire because of uh, during that black metal arsonist uh, period of time back in the 90s when they burned a bunch of these churches, the stave churches. So now that those churches all have uh, fire suppressant systems, uh, unfortunately, yeah, they had to put holes through those 800 year old churches, but they couldn't risk that again. I think they, they burned like 12 of these churches. And uh, at one time there was like a thousand of these uh, stave churches. And now there's uh, only like 28 left. It's crazy. So this is uh, much different living quarters than in, in that house. So these, this was the summer, the summer home, the summer farm. So they would have a fire in the middle of the room. This is where they slept. And then through the hole in the uh, ceiling was uh, where the smoke went. 
I don't know why they would have two farms, but they did. And they're so close to each other. Nice. Buffle. Buffle maker. Yeah, this seems much newer, definitely, in my opinion. 1900s. But really neat. Whoa, those things are huge. The size of big pumpkins. <laughs> That's the elephant and the, the cow, the bull. I don't know if it's a bull or just a cow. Hmm. First time the kids probably ever saw an elephant. That building or that piece of furniture is beautiful. Bench, bench set. They literally use the kitchen. That's why it's closed to the public. They had this wraparound porch. That's so neat. Basically, uh, for the winter time, I'm guessing, to keep it warm and keep the snow out. use as storage now but I think it goes around the entire house that's great and look how this was made stuffed uh, moss or something in there Oh, more wagons. Let's see. So there's not much in this room anymore, but uh, this was a granary. Um, obviously, they you know want to make this area fun for kids. So they have some stuff in there for them to play with. But uh, this was used to store grain. It was built in 1825. A merchant gave the, this town 100 barrels of barley, and. Uh, the granary was built to store this specific grain, and then it was used afterwards uh, at, for with uh, neighboring neighboring farms as well because it was such a big building. Oh, I see. So it's just a bunch of stuff to read in here. In the second half of the 1300s, two young women and two children were buried in the same shallow grave just below the floor of this Yulvdal stave church. They were buried without a coffin, and the grave was probably not even covered with soil. Studies of their skeletons show that the children died at the age of three to four and six to seven years old. The two young women were probably between 15 and 17 years old when they died. All four were buried in garments that they probably also had used in their life, but there are also details of the dressing that was made especially for their funeral. So, just another beautiful gem. 
along the uh, Norwegian countryside here. Amazing area. Uh, I'm going to get back on the road. Hope you enjoyed this. If you get into Norway, check out the, uh, I think it's pronounced Uvdal Stave Church. I mean, there's 28 of them, so at least find one to check out. See you in the next video.